will um, begin the July 11th, 2013 regular Henry County School Board meeting. Um, and we'll ask Mrs. Overby to make the roll. Dr. Duvall. Ms. Flanagan. Here. Mr. Law. Ms. Maddox. Here. Mr. Milner. Here. Ms. Rogers. Here. And Mr. Zayer. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flanagan. Uh, we need an approval for the agenda this morning. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the agenda this morning. All in favor, please raise your right hand.
emerging issues as well as passion for improving the school's learning environment. Agnew received the State Association's Award at the 86th Annual Virginia Middle and High School Principals Conference and Exposition held uh, June 23rd through 26, 2013. She will be honored by Herc Jones later this fall with a presentation of the State Principal Ring uh, principal's ring at a dinner ceremony in Richmond. In addition, all state winners, including Agnew, will be honored at a three-day event in Washington, D.C., September 18th through the 21st. Events highlight feature a visit to Capitol Hill to meet with legislators and networking with some of the best principals across the nation. The event will culminate with a black uh, tie gala to recognize the achievements of each of the state honorees, the state finalists, and the national winners. And we wish you all the luck and thank you for all the hard work that you have done for us, as well as all of our other principals. I get a picture, right? <laughs> Max. The adolescent literacy class is the class that uh, is required for all of our uh, secondary teachers as they recertify every five years. Uh, we have had 85 of our teachers to go through this class. Uh, and what we'd like to do this morning is that we have uh, Ms. Monica Hatchett uh, from Bass High School is here, and she's going to share with you how she's using this class to impact her instruction uh, in her classroom and also our, our community, as you'll see with her with her project. At this time, I'd like to introduce. Uh, Ms. Hatch. Good morning. I had the privilege of participating in adolescent literacy from UVA for Henry County teachers this past spring. And last year I taught 10th grade English, so the projects that I used were relative to those particular students. However, as I move to teaching AP 12 next year, I can see that I will be using a lot of the same things when I move on with them. One of the central projects of the course is for us to examine a small group of our students and determine their um, qualitative reading abilities through a decoding and comprehension reading analysis inventory. So we begin by looking at a decoding list with students and having them read particular words just to let us know, can they read these words? This is the decoding portion of the project. And then each student is also asked to read a passage and answer questions, comprehension style questions with varying levels of difficulty. And then those pieces of information are put together in a reading inventory on that sample group of students. Then further in the class, we were asked to do several other projects based on what we learned from the qualitative reading inventory. The sample on the right is um, a famous editorial written by a small child about whether Santa Claus exists. And so my students read that particular editorial with the artifact of the actual letter and then answered questions that went along with it. 
In the class, we're asked to do four practical application projects. I elected to do a vocabulary project in which my students reviewed vocabulary terms that we had discussed through the year. For example, the first word that you see here is querulous, which means to complain in a whining manner. And instead of just reviewing the terms and definitions, my students created what we call bio poems or biographical poems on the words so that they could come up with creative ways to remember the words. So for example, the student who created this one decided that someone who is querulous would probably be named Debbie Downer. And the traits, synonyms, the relatives of this particular term were determined. And students also created visual images to go along with these to help them to internalize the vocabulary that we had been studying. Additionally, my students did a writing project. The English students I taught last year also took AP European History. And so in conjunction with that course, we did a cross-curricular writing project and they each researched a world religion, which is part of their SOLs for world history, and they created essays and class presentations. And the example you see is one student's one slide of that presentation that he created about the religion of Bodan. And so he shared that with the class after writing. Additionally, we used differentiated texts. And our new English textbooks were very helpful in this particular part of the project because we have interactive readers that go along with that. Because one of our 10th grade English SOLs was to examine nonfiction, my students read Michael J. Fox's Congressional Testimony on Alzheimer's Research from several years ago. And through the interactive readers, they read in varying levels of difficulty. And within that differentiated text project, they then, after reading on their reading levels, were able to answer questions about the particular passage that they read. Then we followed up by having them watch the actual testimony, and they did a raft exercise where they chose different perspectives from which to present a response for the particular project. With all of that being done, and as excited as we were to do all of those, the most meaningful project for my students was by far the technology project that we did. Um, I have the privilege of editing a blog for a colleague who works in Richmond, and he was writing about Wikipedia and its use in the classroom. So I was sharing with my students that, you know, this is a really interesting idea about how Wikipedia is all put together, and they got really excited about it. And we discovered that two local entities did not have a Wikipedia presence at all. Prior to our project, if you went to Wikipedia and searched Facet Furniture Industries or Stonely, all you saw was the name and location and a blank white page. So my students and I went to the Bassett Historical Society and sifted through lots and lots of information that we have locally about these entities. And then they also spent time researching on the internet through the National Historical Registries and other articles that were published online about Bassett Furniture and about Stone Lee so that they could gather information that they felt was important for people around the world to know about these really important local entities. So then they began to work on the process of how do we create this for a global audience. They spent some time looking at some Wikipedia pages, and then they worked in small groups of four. And I teach four classes because they're every other day. So I had four groups of four in each class. Some of them were working on Bassett Furniture Industries, some on Stone Lee. And each group of four would decide, okay, this is what we want the page to look like. Then the next class would add to it and edit. So they're working cooperatively within the classroom but also across the classes with people that they weren't actually in the room with. So together, they came up with the Wikipedia pages you're about to see. The first one is Bassett Furniture Industries. And again, this was only the words Bassett Furniture and a white page before the students did this. Through the process of creating this page, they decided they'd like a timeline format so that they could tell the important events in the history of the company. They found pictures. They learned a lot about getting copyright permission to publish photos. Um, we had to request special permission from Wikipedia for students to publish on their site. And um, the students spent time interviewing people that they know locally who had worked for the company or who knew things about the company. And this is the product they came up with. The next page is Stone Lee. The 
this one was a little harder to find um, photos that we were given permission to use. A lot of the photography of Stone Lee online is copyrighted by the bulletin or by wedding photographers who were not willing to share their photos with the students for this particular purpose. Um, and we did not actually take a field trip to either location. So this site only shows a map. But these students followed the same format and decided that they would like to present a timeline of important events in the history of Stone Lee. And they shared information about the particular entity and its National Historic Registry. They also decided in each group that it was very important to look at their references, their work cited. So through the process, they really were able to apply the concepts that we teach the students every day as far as the importance of research and citing their sources. But they were very excited to know this has to be perfect because somebody in another country might read this. Um, almost more importantly, they were very excited to know that our school administrators had gone to their Wikipedia pages and seen it. And so when administrators came through the halls at school and said, hey, I saw that Wikipedia page. That was a really great job. That was pretty cool that you did that. The students were very excited to know that they had had such an important role in creating something. And so I think that there will be a lot of applications of this sort of project in the future for students, no matter what grade level, because they see the value in doing something in this real world sort of application. So they were very excited to do that. So today, I say all that to you just to say that um, professional opportunities, professional development opportunities that you all share with us as Henry County educators are more than just opportunities for us. They have become excellent opportunities for our students. And um, I appreciate, and I know my colleagues appreciate, your support of our continued learning so that we can share that continued learning with our students. Good morning. Over the past few months, the Dr. Kyden and the athletic directors have discussed various topics related to athletics and activities, and I'm going to update you on three of those topics, eighth grade participation, coaches training, and the pledge program. Last year, eighth graders were allowed to participate on the, in the high school sports on the JV level, but it was on a need basis system. If a team needed a couple other players and they couldn't find them in the high school, they could get eighth graders or, or solicit eighth grade participation, but there was an unwritten limit. You know, two or three eighth graders per team per sport was the unwritten limit, and that had to be approved by both principals, both coaches, and the parents in order for that eighth grader or those eighth graders to participate. To make this process easier and to open it up for more eighth graders, this year it's going to be based on performance. If an eighth grader has the skill set to compete on the JV level, then those eighth graders will have the right to try out for the JV team. And there is no uh, limit on participation. If there's one eighth grader who's deemed uh, qualified to play on that JV team by the coaches, then one eighth grader will play. If there's five, then the coach has the right to keep all five of those eighth graders. And all eighth graders will have the right to try out. Those who don't make it can go back and play middle school sports. A couple factors affecting those adjustments. One, the middle school teams have had a difficult time finding a full schedule. 
They've had to play a limited schedule. Some teams are playing 10 or less games, and some have even played five or fewer games. Um, another factor affecting the adjustment is a decreased participation on the high school level. Many high school students are now specializing in sports. The VHSL has allowed for year-round practice, so kids who play baseball, maybe they're playing baseball year-round instead of playing football or wrestling, so you have fewer students actually trying out. And last year that meant you know, 10 high school teams needed eighth graders to participate. And by opening it up, you know, hopefully we, you know, we won't have any issues with fielding teams uh, this upcoming season. The se second topic I'm going to update you on is coaches training. And this is one of the two new items that I'll discuss. But this is a countywide training for all middle and high school coaches that's paid, volunteer, head coaches, as well as assistant coaches. And each coach will have to attend one session per year. And the sessions will be led by the athletic directors. And they'll discuss various topics. And all the topics that they discuss will focus around four goals. Uh, to create a culture of best practices, uh, create consistency among all four schools, as well as between middle schools and between high schools, and to establish as well as reiterate the expectations of coaches, and to increase sportsmanship. And the two meetings have been scheduled for July 22nd at 6.30 at Bassett and July 29th at 6.30 at Magna Vista. And the final piece that I will update you on is the pledge program. There's been conversation about having a random drug testing program, and you know there's been research and uh, conversation about that. But we're going to start with the pledge program this year in which students will pledge not to use, possess, or distribute alcohol, tobacco, illegal or synthetic drugs while participating in sports for Henry County Public Schools. And the purpose is to bring attention to the dangers of drug use, ensure safety of student athletes, and to eventually transition into a full random drug testing program. All student athletes will have to sign the pledge along with the parent. So just like the physical form and the concussion form, it has to be on file in order for a student athlete to participate. And this is going to begin effective uh, with the fall 2013 sports season. So it's right around the corner. Uh, parents and students will receive more information. Each athletic director will hold a parent meeting prior to the beginning of each season. So there will be more conversation and a chance for parents to ask questions at those meetings. And the pledge will also be available on the Henry County Public School website. And this is a growing program, but you know, it does you know, have some promise to it. And you know, those are the three things that I wanted to update you on today. And if there are any questions or comments, you can ask those now. Just one thing to add to that. We noticed we talked about in a work session previously, we were looking at middle school athletics. As we discussed at that time, we're going to spend the next uh, several months looking at middle school athletics. We didn't make a change uh, to, uh, we didn't make a significant change to what happened last year. The only difference is we're trying to increase the number of uh, games schools that we're competing with because as Mr. Diller said there were some sports that had very few uh, games because of limited participation but, uh, but we do plan to bring a recommendation back during the course of this upcoming year uh, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of some things that are going on right now with athletics. Uh, one other thing uh, and this is perhaps more in line with the coaches as a uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody is aware that I'm a retired military combat veteran. And I probably hold probably hold higher respect for the flag than most people. It bothers me when I'm at a basketball game and the national anthem is played and to see a coach stand there with his head down and his arms crossed. I realize that we cannot compel them to show proper respect, but I think it's setting a bad example for our coaches and they do not show the proper respect in front of the students. So I wish that we could work on that. And, you know, that's something that we can definitely add to the agenda for that coach's training mm -hmm. is just to make sure the coaches understand, you know, things of that nature, set an example, set example for the students as well as the fans. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. And also, thanks to all of you guys back there. I know you spent hours and hours working on this, and I think you've done a great job. Thank you very much. Our next item on the agenda are speakers from the floor. We have two today, both from the Henry County Education Association. Ms. Carter, you want to go first? 
For the last four years, the motto of the Henry County Education Association has been promoting professionalism while teaching, leading, and learning. This morning we'd like to discuss just six points of pride. There are more, but we'll discuss six. And, but before I do that, we have three issues we'd like to address to Dr. Cotton and the board. Uh, first of all, we want to say thank you for addressing a salary scale, for instigating a study of the salary scale. That's the right thing to do. We appreciate that. Secondly, we want to say thank you for considering a possible raise in January of 2014. And thirdly, we would like you to consider evening board meetings completely. Um, it's amazing to me that a school system of this size, um, that we do not have board meetings that are a little more accessible to teachers, parents, and the community, uh, the taxpayer. Um, and I know that sometimes we don't have too many people attending either. And I will say that the people of our community should be attending the school board meetings because this is our future. When we educate students, we're educating the future of Henry County. For our points of pride, um, we want to say we're proud of the teachers in our system. We're proud that, I know this number could flex a little, but about 45% of our teachers have advanced degrees. That's good for our students. And we're proud of that. We're proud of all the teachers of the year in every building, and then ultimately a teacher of the year for the county. We're proud that we have Mrs. Agnew, the principal of all the year for the state, and going on to national. We're proud to have nearly 30 <laughs> national board uh, certified teachers, and we're gonna thank Dr. Cotton for allowing us to honor those people at convocation this year as we continue to promote that. We're thankful for uh, the Harvest Foundation's interest in that and for Mr. House who has um, pushed this program so well and Pamela Drews who, who works with those teachers. Um, that's an excellent thing. About three years ago, Hampton Roads had the most um, national board certified teachers in the state and I predict that one day we, we may have one of the highest percentages with this continued support. We're proud of our students who accomplish things in so many areas, too numerous to mention. And finally, as the president of the Henry County Education Association, I have been really honored to represent teachers the last four years. But I'm proud this morning to present to you Maria Ayers, who is going to be our new president for the next two years. <laughs> Maria uh, teaches uh, pre Preschool. Preschool, yes, and Axon Elementary. And together we really look forward to continuing to promote professionalism through teaching, leading, and learning pre-K through 12 in Henry County. Thank you, Ms. Cotton. Okay. And the only thing I wanted to say was I'm just very pleased to uh, serve on behalf of the Henry County Education Association. I'm looking forward to uh, working with Everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Our consent agenda this morning is extremely long, but I think there are all kinds of things that happened this time of year. So if you would take one second just to look over those 11 items and see if there is one or two that you would like to take out and discuss separately or vote upon separately, or if you are ready to. Fall and each spring, we, we contract with UVA to offer the adolescent literacy course that Monica demonstrated this morning. Uh, the, the amount of contract is 18000 
uh, nine hundred dollars recommend that uh, approval for to uh, in, enter into this contract with the University of Virginia. As you're aware, Warrior Tech will open in the fall uh, 2013. Uh, we'll be focusing on project-based learning. Uh, we'll also be uh, covering what we've been talking a lot about in, in, in our area, uh, the four C's, working with our students on critical thinking, creativity, effective communication, and collaboration. We've also been working on it as we're revising our curriculum. Uh, and this, with Warrior Tech, we'll be emphasizing those things. This is year one support, and it makes available all the resources available through new tech, uh, such as the ECHO system that they will use in terms of a lot of the resources that are available throughout the network of new tech schools, not just Magna Vista, but across the country. They'll have access to information and things that they can use in their classrooms. Uh, the, the amount is $101,200, and that is part of our harvest grant. Yes, everyone is in place. And I think Dr. Cotton mentioned yesterday that he went up and looked at the media center and was amazed what they've already done, so we may all want to come and have an opportunity to see what they did. It's amazing how much progress has been made in a short amount of time. And uh, we can really see, see it come together. I also wanted to note that um, the agreement with the New Tech Network, I'll be bringing to the board hopefully in August. Um, as Mr. Howe said, we are using perfectly in line with that, the professional development that's involved. Also, a representative from New Tech Network makes site visits out to uh, observe and then support the teachers as we're moving forward. But I'll, I'll be bringing that agreement forward so that you all can, can see what's involved in that moving forward. But we're really excited about where we are right now where we're going. Okay. And have we uh, finalized the students that will be attending? Last I checked, I think we had Miss Agnes gone. I think they had 97. They had 97 students. Well, I just heard yesterday that they're waiting for us. Okay. Okay. I believe she's out there at about 107, which is phenomenal because we wanted 100, and we're now over 100. So that's so great. Is our uh, list of students representative of the demographics of the school system? I don't have that information available right now, Mr. Miller, but I can get that oh, make that available okay. for you. We'll, we'll do a breakdown of the demographics. Um, I would assume that, that it should be because the only requirement was that they had an interest in being a part of uh, the program. So uh, hopefully we have a good representation, but we'll definitely provide that. Not only demographics of our students, but I'm also intrigued by the number of students we're getting from uh, private schools. might be reversing the trend of our students being going to private school to the private school coming back. Although uh, it may be too early to say that, but, uh, but uh, it is something to, to look at. We have definitely created some interest and in buzz because there are students who really embrace this, this way of learning. And uh, uh, I really felt the students were going to be the ones drumming it up, but I'm very encouraged to know that before we've even started, we
agenda is um, the selection of a delegate and an alternate to represent Union County Public Schools at the 2013 BSBA Delegate Assembly and the additional motion of Dr. Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This is the um, something that we do each year uh, where we have, we designate, usually past practice has been to designate the chair and vice chair as an alternate serve in this capacity, and I would just recommend uh, the same that we've done in the past. It would be Dr. Paul as the um, designee and Ms. Mag as the chair. No Second. It has been moved and seconded. All in favor, please raise your right hand. And we have uh, five items under the superintendent's report. Are there for you to review? Um, we did not do a superintendent's highlight report uh, with the summer. We haven't had as much going on. We have a lot going on, I will say, in the planning uh, component, but with schools being out, um, we don't have any highlights to share. I do want to let you know that I will be providing a back to school uh, preparedness report in August, which we're, we're working on, to let you know all of the things that have been put in place for the upcoming year. As far as the other reports that are included there, we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have about any of those. Yes, any questions for Dr. Thomas? Are there matters from the board that you would like to mention this morning? Now, hearing any, we will move to the remainder, uh, the remainder of dates. July 25th, the school board will be in a retreat um, from 9 until 1 o'clock at Chapman's. Uh, on August the 6th, that is convocation. Me? Eighth. Eighth. I'm sorry. Eighth. One. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> on August the 6th, we will uh, have the convocation for the opening of the school year for teachers. That will be at Magna Vista High School. On August the 8th, the uh, regular um, school board meeting here in the um, summer meeting room. On August the 12th is the first day of school. A very exciting day around here, so you might want to get out and see all the little kindergarten children when they get off the bus. They're always so excited. Uh, on July the 22nd and 23rd, the Virginia School Board Association is holding a conference on education. This is the one that used to be called the Governor's Conference. Mm -hmm. And it is at the Marriott in Richmond. And on September 30th, there's a new legislative advocacy conference at the Omni in Charlottesville. At this time, we're going to move into a work session upstairs in the third floor meeting room. Um, I think it will be a very interesting one and that all of you would enjoy attending. It is uh, one of these is Technology trees. So we will um, adjourn to the